Hi, hello everyone. This is International Master Asav Givon here with you. So today we are going to talk a little bit about the art of attack and how to attack in chess. So uh, today I wanted to illustrate this topic with you, uh, with the game uh, by uh, from Sergey Azarov with the white pieces, a strong grandmaster from the U.S. If I'm not mistaken. And with black, an international master, uh, Corley Casa, not familiar with this player, but also a very decent player, above uh, 2,400. So, I like very much this game, because it illustrates very well all of the main uh, principles of the attack, which I'm going to demonstrate to you shortly. Uh, and also by the fact that uh, black, in general, played very passively, in this game and allowed White to execute all of his problem, all of his um, plans rather uh, effortlessly. So let's start. So White played e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6. So we have the Petro of defense. Of course, the, the Petro of defense has a very uh, solid uh, reputation of being uh, uh, like a very safe opening for Black. But in this uh, in this game, Black uh, I think played it a little bit um, kind of too humanely. Didn't uh, didn't try to play very actively, and it kind of backfired. So knight takes e4, and here okay, the main lines are either d4 followed by bishop d3 or knight c3, which is uh, currently the most popular move. Aiming at knight xc3, d takes c3, followed by bishop e3, queen d2, and long castling. This is the most popular line. But Sergei Azarov um, chooses other path. He plays c4 here, which is also a possible move. So trying to uh, control the square d5. So later, when he will play d4 and bishop d3, uh, black will not have the possibility of defending his knight with the move d5. So, a sensible move. Bishop e7, d4, castles, bishop d3, knight f6. So, in general, Black didn't play uh, too actively in the opening. He's kind of got himself in a, a, bit, a bit cramped position. White is controlling the center, and Black currently has no pawns uh, in the center, so white is for sure slightly better. Uh, but in this point it's hard to imagine that he will have such a huge attack that he had later on in the game at this point. So white played h3 here. This is a nice move, preventing the move bishop g4 from black. So now uh, black is kind of forced to passivity with this bishop on c8. Castles, knight d7, knight c3. Okay, so I'm passing the next move quite fast because each side just finishes development. Knight d6, queen c2, c6, bishop d2. So it would seem like the position is roughly equal because of the symmetrical nature of the position. But actually, white's pieces are much better placed especially his bishops, has more scope than their opponent uh, bishops, and he has more space in the center. So definitely the advantage, uh, the advantage is with white here. So black played bishop d7. As you can see, he's quite cramped uh, with his pieces because he has not much space. Rook e2, trying to double the rooks. Bishop f8, takes, takes, and Rook e1. Um, so this is uh, the first um, the starting point of, uh, let's say, our advent adventure uh, in this game. So white is practically fully developed right now. This is no move number 16, and it's kind of time to choose a, a plan, like how to proceed from here. So black played here the move h6. So, first of all, uh, I would suggest each one uh, which uh, watches this video to kind of think for himself, what do you think, is it a good move or a bad move, h6. So, 
The move h6, in my opinion, is a mistake because it moves the pawns in front of the king forward and creating some potential uh, weaknesses in the future. So now this knight is slightly more hanging than before because the pawn no longer defends him. And second problem uh, is later on uh, white might use the fact that the pawn is on h6 to break through with g4, g5. So, um, but now white once again needs to choose a plan. So we want to, let's say we want to start thinking about an attack. So if we, if we go straight away and just storm our opponent uh, with um, what we've got, probably it will fail because White at the moment doesn't have uh, enough pieces in the attack and if you can see uh, Black's King looks fairly safe, he has a lot of uh, defending pieces and it wouldn't be so easy to break through. So, um, first of all, try the first, um, the first principle which I like to speak is to always try to get all of your pieces into the attack, it's, or at least as much pieces as you can. So at this moment try to think which one of White's pieces uh, is not, uh, let's say, uh, participating, uh, cannot be participating in a future attack and is too far away and try to think how would you bring it closer to the enemy king. So the answer is this knight on c3, uh, although is standing in the center of the board, is quite far away from the king. And this is why White in the game played the move knight e2. A very nice move. So bringing the knight slightly closer to the king side, perhaps thinking later about jumping to f5 perhaps, or in some cases even to h5 if the knight ever moves from f6. So black played knight e7. As you can see, black is playing very passively this game. He's not trying to create any kind of counterplay. And this is by the way, a mistake. I think that Black in some point definitely should have thought about some possibilities of counterplay, perhaps on the queen side, with moves like d5 or even b5, just to create some sort of counterplay. Because if you play completely uh, without, um, let's say, any, uh, any intentions of disturbing your uh, opponent's plan, usually this kind of strategy fails because white will execute all of his plans without any problems. So here is the second moment. So what, how do you think white should proceed from here? So he played knight e2. So uh, white could play the move knight g3 immediately, which is sensible. But he chose to play first the move g4, which is a very good decision, because now, later on, he will have the possibilities of playing g4 to g5 in, er in order to break through on the king side, which leads me uh, to the second principle I wanted to talk about. So, uh, when attacking the enemy king, uh, you should always aim to open up as much uh, lines uh, as possible against the king. So I'm talking about diagonals or open files, uh, anything which would help uh, you to reach the enemy king. Because at the moment you see he has a lot of kind of defending pawns and we want to try to reduce the amount of the pawns which um, defend him. So with the move g5 later we are getting closer to our aim. So g4, good move. Black, black played bishop to d7. Now we can play knight g3. So now our knights are on the right places, let's say. Or they are closer to the king. And we can already start thinking about how to break through and reaching the king. So black played queen c7, perhaps planning to bring, bring the rook into the game. And now, once again, how do you think white should proceed? You can stop the video. So, of course, white, after all of these uh, preparations, should play g5. 
practically forcing the move eight take to g5. And now also kind of an important question. You have two possibilities to take on g5 with the bishop or to take on g5 with the knight. So what would you choose? So practically uh, both are possible so the move bishop takes g5 is not a mistake but I like the move knight takes g5 much better. First of all it poses a very immediate threat of mating two moves so if we like to play some random move I can play bishop h7, king h8, knight takes f7, checkmate. Or if he takes, obviously it also mate in one move. Also the knight, just in case, protects this pawn. And it just get the knight closer to the attack. So now the knight is kind of... Um, kind of looking at the, at the weak pawn on f7 and the square on h7 which are very sensitive squares in black scam which is also a very important um, principle in the attack so always search uh, for weak squares at your opponent's scam so you see for example the f7 square is only defended by the king is not so adequately defended so it might be a good target to attack also the square on h7 is defended only by the knight and the king and this is a potential mating square so if we imagine that the knight is not an f6 is disappeared from the board and the bishop somehow disappearing we can perhaps bring the queen to h7 and it, it would, be, would be checkmate of course it's still a long way to go but it's good to have such ideas in mind so maybe later it can uh, take off so here black played a critical mistake, he played bishop e8 back with the idea to protect his pawn on f7. Uh, he should have played g6 in order to block this diagonal of white, but still white has a lot of nice attacking possibilities, so I suggest you also to try to stop the video and to think about uh, what kind of possibilities does white have here so I would mention a few which I think are very very nice possibilities so one of them is simply to play bishop f4 with the threat of c5 using this pin on the d6 pawn another very interesting possibility is to sacrifice the rook on e7 so eliminating a very important defender oh, in black's position, the knight on e7, which leads me to another very important principle. So when attacking, try to spot um, the main uh, defenders of the black's position and try to eliminate them. So the knight on e7 protects this pawn on g6. And after the move, rook takes e7, bishop takes g6 suddenly working very well because if this is taken there is queen takes g6 and made to follow either on f7 or after king h8 knight f7 is also checkmate or, or even the move queen d1 is perhaps possible with the idea to bring the queen slightly closer to the game with f3 so playing according to the principle of bringing your pieces into the attack. So a lot of nice possibilities if you manage to find at least one of them so congratulations. But as I said black played bishop to e8. So now we know that black did not close this long diagonal so white has some bishop h7 check possibilities here but this is a kind of a critical moment so white placed most of the of his pieces on the good squares this knight on g5 the rook is on an open file there is a lot of good chemistry in the white pieces they have good harmony so it's quite sensible that white already has a, a very kind of straightforward way to to reach the king even though at the moment he has 
this a, a lot of defending pieces. So once again, try to stop the video uh, and try to find at least one good attacking possibility because there are actually several good ways to proceed here. Actually, in the game, uh, Grandmaster Azaro find a very very nice idea, which is also very spectacular, which I will uh, will, will um, show you in a second. But before showing uh, the move that White played in the actual game, I wanted to mention a few other possibilities which are also very promising. So let's try to think. Let's say we didn't manage to to find a, a, a very straightforward win. Let's try to think uh, what other possibilities White can have here. So for example, I can see that this bishop on d2 is not fully participating in the attack which is um, of course I, I might not need him but let's say I want to play according to the principle of bringing all of my pieces into the attack how do I bring him to the attack so I think I would like to put him on the long diagonal and to play the move d5 to open up the diagonal but if I play the move bishop c3 immediately, he will block me with the move d5 and the bishop would stay kind of bad on c3. So, the, so one of the good ways to proceed here is actually to start with the move d5, a pawn sacrifice, with the idea to place the bishop on c3 without allowing black to block it. So now after, let's say, c takes d5, bishop c3, now this bishop is excellent, he is ready perhaps to take on f6 if needed, so eliminating the main defender of the black king, this knight, which protects the square on h7. And if, for example, black takes d takes c4, d takes c4 um, I also invite you to find uh, the win here for white, which is by this point um, quite a... Uh, a forced win, which is uh, White has such an active pieces in the attack that he just mu must have something. Which also leads me to another very important principle in the attack, and also I think in chess in general. So when all of your pieces are standing on their best squares or very good squares, like these two bishops, which aim aim at the king, this knight on g5. The, the rook on e1 on an open file, so they're almost perfect square for all of our pieces. So always try to search for tactics, for some some uh, very straight uh, forward line, some forcing variations, because they're all we, they will always work for the side which has the better pieces. And black is so cramped here that all all of the variations must work for in white's favor. So the winning continuation from this position is bishop takes f6, g takes f6 is a forced move. Pay, please pay attention that this pawn is pinned, so he cannot take the other bishop. So black must take on f6, and now the actually very simple move, bishop takes c4, kind of closing the issue, because now white is threatening queen h7 checkmate. Remember that kind of couple of moves ago, I told you that this queen can maybe will finally maybe reach the h7 square, and now it's happening. And if the knight is taken, white has bishop takes f7 check, followed by winning the queen on c7, and white is just completely winning. So this is just one possibility that white have here. Uh, if you found the move queen d1, which is also a very strong move, with the idea to perhaps eliminate oh, once again this knight from f6 by the move knight h5, also a very strong move, which is perhaps not a, um, a forced win, but is a one which is very effective also. So if you found one of these two moves, congratulations. But if you manage to find the following sequence of move, which Azar played in the game, so uh, this is even better. Because he played bishop h7 check here, forcing the move king h8. Of 
course, if the bishop is taken, it's made in one move. So king h8. Uh, and now the spectacular move, rook to e4, which is perhaps the one of the most beautiful moves in this game. So just putting the rook on an attacked square. But if this is taken, so now white is... Uh, bringing his queen to the deadly square of h4 and from there the way to the black king is short and also uh, on the way we eliminated this knight on f6 which was a very very important defender of the black's position so now it's it's even though black is in exchange up his pieces are so badly placed that he cannot do too much to resist the threat of queen h4 and then perhaps bishop g8 and queen h7 mate. He can try to play f6 here, which delays the mate for the moment, because after queen h4 there is f takes g5, but he can simply play knight e6 here with a double attack, uh, so winning back the material, something like queen b6, knight f8. So now with white is even the material up, but he still have a very very strong attack and a winning position. So in the game, Black played g6 here with the idea to give the king a square to run into uh, g7. But after rook h4, we see that now the rook is also particip fully participating in the attack. King g7 is forced to get out of the h file. But now it's just too much, you know, all of white's pieces are so active here and the black king is so exposed that white must have a very crushing attack here. But we still need to find um, the way to get through because still there is not a forced mate in this position, but there is a very nice way to reach the king. So once again, try to find the best move here. I, I would not lie, in this position, in general, white, white's position is so good that he is actually having a lot of good possibilities here. So even if you don't find the best move, white is probably still winning here. But of course, we always try to find the best move and to finish the game immediately rather than finding some second best move which allows our opponent to resist for longer. So, once again, uh, my way of thinking is, okay, which piece is not fully participating in the attack? And once again, I think the answer is this bishop on d2, still not doing, or, or at least not contributing too much to the attack. So, once again, I think the, the answer is quite uh, obvious where I want it. I want it to be on this diagonal. Now it's even more deadly than before because the king, uh, this diagonal was opened by the move g6. So now it's completely uh, defenseless on this diagonal. So once again, bishop c3 would be a mistake. Once again, because of d5. So closing up our bishop. So the best move here is und undoubtedly the move d5. So cl opening up this diagonal and from here the way the game was quite um, it, it was ended quite shortly after the moves bishop d7 bishop c3 of course black is completely defenseless here so white is already threatening all kinds of threats so for example just simply to go knight e4 and to take the knight he might also think about the move bishop takes f6, followed by king c3. Just too much ideas. <laughs> black is completely defenseless. So black tried the move knight f5, perhaps to try to exchange some pieces. But here right has really a lot of good options. So once again, try to stop the video and find the best continuation. Uh, 
White has a lot of good moves, um, which which win the game. Uh, but I think uh, the way Azarov chose is perhaps the simplest and the most straightforward one. He played knight h5 here. So in a way, it's kind of a poetic move because the knight on g3 is, did not, um, let's say, have too much impact on on our attack uh, so far. So kind of sacrificing it in order to open up even more lines against the king after g takes h5, bishop takes f5, uh, is very nice. Um, Black actually resigned after the move knight h5 check because in this position it's really becoming kind of too easy for white. It's material equality, Why didn't even need to sacrifice anything in order to get to this position. And he's simply threatening, uh, amongst others, to play bishop takes d7. Let's say I will make some random move. And now the very nice checkmate queen h7 also appears on the board. Um, by the way, if, if in this position you thought about the move bishop takes f6 and queen c3 here, this is also a very good continuation. Because if the king takes the knight, um, <laughs> the king is uh, too exposed and it, it will lead to mate uh, very shortly. Uh, very shortly, for example, after knight uh, knight e4 check, for example, I, I'm sure there are also other ways. But the most straightforward way I see to mate is queen f6. If king h5, it's queen g5 checkmate. And if queen ta king takes g3, okay, <laughs> here um, it's uh, white is or oh, with this king on h3, white is already for choice how exactly he wants to checkmate. So, but I think uh, the way uh, Azarov chose is very simple and straightforward, and I think I would play it also, knight h5. So, Yes, in this position, black resigned. So, what uh, did we see in this game? So, first of all, I think maybe the, perhaps the main lesson from this game is that you should never defend passively like black did in this game. So, if black in some point of this game, for example, coming back um, to one of these positions, at least tried to play some counterplay on the king side, eh, on, oh, sorry, on the queen side, it wouldn't be that easy for black to react. But once he didn't do this, as you, as you saw in this game, white executed all of his goals and plans quite easily. So, um, what, did, what did we learn uh, from this game? So, the main principles of the attack. So, one, uh, try to bring all of your pieces into the attack and, and try to get your bishops aiming at the king if you want to attack him. Second of all, try to open up lines uh, like diagonals and, and uh, open files against the king. So the move g5 illustrated it quite well. Also, the move rook to e4 uh, illustrates two points. So once the Again, bring all of your pieces into the attack and also eliminate main defender. So in this case it was the knight, which disturbs us from executing our plans. So here, if it's taken, it's much easier for us to attack. So always try to spot this main defender of the king. Try to exchange it, to sacrifice uh, for it. This is always very important in the attack. And last, but perhaps the most important principle, is when the moment comes and all of your pieces are on a good squares, on a perfect squares, uh, always try to search for the tactic, for the final blow, and it will always work in your favor if your pieces are standing on the right places. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sure you enjoyed this game very much. Thank you, and goodbye.